Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to be covering a lot. A recent discovery has given us new ways to reperform several glitches from earlier versions and we'll be going over the major ones today. This video is bound to be on the longer side, so let's get right into it. The new trick that's going to let us perform these other glitches is called Like Like Stick Culling, and it was discovered by Ock. This is going to be step one for every other glitch in this video, so we're going to be going over it first. To set this up, all you need is some control sticks. You technically only need two, but the more the better. And a like like in a cull zone. Now, what is a cull zone? Cull zones, and by relation, culling, are ways for the game to optimize resource usage and performance. Without going into too much detail, culling is essentially the act of partially unloading an item or actor within a certain space known as a cult zone. All you really need to know about culling is that a culled item becomes invisible, but it's still loaded and acts a little weird. And all you need to know about cull zones is that when you leave one, the actors inside get culled, and when you enter one, the actors inside get unculled. So armed with this new information, we're going to head to Hateno Village, because in the well beneath the town, there's a like-like that just so happens to be sitting inside a cull zone. I will note that this is not the only possible place to do this, this has just been the most consistent and reliable location over the course of research and testing in the community. I'll have a link in the description to an object map showing every cull zone in the game if anyone wants to try finding other locations where this will work well. If you do find any other good locations for this, I highly encourage you to join the Speedrun Discord and share your discoveries there. So we'll warp into Hateno via the Southern Shrine, then hop down the well next to us, and take this path to the right to get straight to our like like. There will be two keys on the ceiling as you enter the room. Get rid of those or they will become a nuisance. Once that's done, keep some distance from the like like and make a save. This will be just in case you either run out of control sticks or health while trying this. Our goal is to take out a control stick and mount it at the same time we get eaten by the like like. Now to add as much consistency to this as we can, I'll be showing you the position setup that I like to use. Stand roughly centered in the room with the like like. Then you want to move forward until Link's toes are about lined up with the closest side of this rock right here on the right. Now take out your control stick and walk forward until you're about half a link away from the platform. Basically imagine that there's another link directly in front of you. You want to leave enough space so that way that link in front of you would be half on the control stick and half on the ground. When the like like opens up to eat you, you want to count the pulses on that bulb and we're going to try and time the mount for roughly when the fifth pulse would be. If you're familiar with like-like fuse entanglement, it's essentially the same timing as that. When you mount the stick, one of a few things is going to happen. If the stick gets eaten and you get knocked back, this means that you mounted too early. If you get swallowed with the stick and the camera follows you back to the like-like, it means you mounted too late. If the stick gets eaten and you don't get touched at all, it means you were way too late and or too far away from the stick. If you timed it correctly, you should see both Link and the stick get eaten, but your camera will stay right where it was instead of following Link back with the like like. After you've been eaten, the like will chew you for a little bit before spitting. During this process, you can wiggle the control stick to make him spit you a little bit faster. Now, after this first spit, it's going to start chewing again and then spit two more times before locking back onto you and trying to eat you again. During this whole process, you're not going to have any control. You'll just be stuck in place and you're just waiting for the like like to go through the motions. When it lunges at you to grab you the second time, you'll get hit and knocked back and your character model will return and give you back your control. What we've done with this is basically created an invisible connection from the control stick to both the like-like and Link. This means that when we leave the cull zone and the like-like gets culled, the control stick is also going to get culled because it's connected to that like. And because we're also connected to that control stick, we'll get culled at the same time. So from here, once we've been knocked back into reality, you want to go ahead and pull out another control stick and we're just going to mount that and hop off real quick. And what this is going to do 
is it's going to unlock our ability wheel for us because normally when we get hit by that like like your ability wheel is going to be inaccessible and you'll be locked to whatever your previously selected ability was so by mounting that control stick we pretty much just unlock that and gain access to it again now we're going to head back down the way we came and we're going to make our way to this spot right here this is where we'll be leaving the cave from but don't ascend out just yet the stick call is effectively done at this point but some of the glitches in the video will be starting from right here so I recommend watching the steps for the glitch or glitches that you're interested in before trying to follow along with them. This way, you're much less likely to end up messing things up by accident and having to redo this whole like-like process again. Now that we're set up and ready to be culled, the first thing I want to do is go over what's going to happen once you ascend out of this cave and how to control Link in the state that we're going to be in. Now, one of a few things is going to happen when you ascend out of here. You'll either call immediately after finishing the ascend. You'll call after a quick to moderate delay. Or you won't call at all and you'll just be standing there. Our goal here is to get called. So if you ascend through the ground and don't get called after a short delay, you want to turn around and walk toward the well. The slower you walk, the better. This will most likely result in you getting called as you get closer to the well. But in the event that you don't, by the time you reach it, simply climb up onto the edge and backflip off. In all of my testing, this has 100% consistently resulted in the call activating. So if worst case, you don't end up getting called for whatever reason, you just climb on the well and hop backwards off of it. You should call as soon as you touch the ground. Now, while called, you're going to be completely immobile but you will still be able to do a few select things. Namely, you can freely interact with all of your menus, meaning both hard menus and the D-pad quick menus. With that, you can freely interact with and change your equipment. You can also freely open and interact with your ability wheel, provided you mounted a second stick to unlock it before we left the cave. The most important thing you can do while called is watch memories. When you watch a memory in this state, it actually uncalls you for a brief time, giving you full control back in that window. And this is where a lot of the magic can happen. During this window, if you mount a control stick or pick up an item that Link holds above his head, such as a rock or a cooking pot or a stabilizer, anything like that, you can effectively pause the call in its place. And if you want to unpause it and get recalled, you can simply move back toward the well and like before, if that doesn't work, you can just climb up on the edge and backflip off and you'll get called as soon as you hit the ground again. If you want to fully break the call state, then you just simply warp away anywhere you want. So now that you know how to navigate while called, we can get into the real fun stuff. And we're going to start with arguably the biggest glitch that this setup allows for, and that would be fuse entanglement. So starting from where we are in the cave, we want to ascend up through the ground and once you get up, either before being called or after getting called, it doesn't matter. You don't have to worry about speed or being too slow. You want to open your inventory and drop whatever it is you want to fuse and tangle on the ground. Depending on what you drop, you may need to reposition yourself with memories so you're in fuse range. Namely, if you drop weapons, you may have to watch a memory to turn yourself around to get it in range for the fuse to pick it up. Once that's done, you want to equip whatever shield or melee weapon you're entangling with. Unlike most prior versions of fuse entanglement, this method will let us entangle two melee weapons and not just shields. And just as a note, you can do the steps of taking your item out and equipping your shield or weapon in whatever order. You don't necessarily have to do it in that order. Now, I want to quickly explain how this is going to work before you try it because it's very easy to mess up. To successfully fuse entangle, we need to uncall with a memory, then try and time the fusion to happen at the same time that we get recalled. And there's two ways that we can do this. There's the original way, and there's the better way. For the original and less consistent way, once your item is out and you have your shield equipped, hold L to open your ability wheel and select fuse. Do this even in subsequent attempts when you already have Fuse selected, 
because what this does is it buffers the input, meaning that when you do this, you're telling the game that next time Link becomes actionable, the first thing you should do is start up Fuse. Using the wheel over just tapping L when you already have it selected just makes it more likely that you'll actually properly engage the ability. Once you've selected Fuse, press minus to open the Purapad, then watch a memory. As always, you can skip right through. You never need to fully watch the memory for any glitch that uses them. When the memory is finished, press B to close the menu and you'll uncull for anywhere between a few frames and a few seconds. When you uncull, Fuse will already be pulled up like we said and you'll need to time the button press so the item fuses at the same time you get culled. If done right, the item will fall back to the ground and in your inventory, it will also be fused to the shield or weapon that you used. The item on the ground will also start culling with you from this point, so long as you have the entangled equipment still equipped. From here, you can pause the cull and do whatever it is you wanted to do with your entangled items. For the second and much more consistent way, once your item is on the ground and your shield is equipped, hold L to open the ability wheel and select recall. Now press minus and go watch a memory. When that's done, press B to close the menu and you should be standing uncalled with recall active. If recall isn't active, reselect it in the ability wheel and just try again. Activating recall prevents Link from being recalled while it remains active and for whatever reason, pulling up recall makes the amount of time before getting recalled much more consistent than the other method. So from here, you want to select fuse from the wheel and as soon as you release it, the recall timer will start. Your goal is to press the button to fuse briefly after the wheel closes. You don't want to mash to press it immediately. If you do, you'll fuse too fast and it will just fully fuse to your shield or weapon. You need to have some small delay between the wheel closing and you pressing the button to fuse. This is going to be a bit of a pain to get right, but at least this way, the window you're timing in is consistent as opposed to random with the other method. There is one caveat to note about fuse entanglement, however, and that's unfortunately the fact that you can soft lock yourself while doing it. If Link gets recalled while the item is in the transition phase, meaning it's still moving toward the object it's fusing to, you will get soft locked in the cult. The only way to get out of this without closing and restarting the game is to wait for a Blood Moon. Blood Moons break culling, so by extension, it's able to free you from the soft lock. Otherwise, you need to close the game, open it back up, and try again from the start. Now, I know this has been a lot of information for just two glitches so far, but those were the building blocks. Now that you know how to do these two, the rest are going to be much, much easier to go over. The next few glitches are ones that are going to utilize Fuse Entanglement. For time, these won't cover any specifics related to the entanglement process, so if you forget something, just come back to this section for a quick refresher. The first entanglement glitch we're going to cover is Gas and Gas Launching. So, for those who don't know, Gas stands for Guardless Active Shield and is basically a way of turning on a device that's fused to your shield while the shield is still on your back. Gas launching is exactly what it sounds like. You're using gas to launch yourself into the air. To perform this, you first need to fuse entangle a fan to your shield. Once that's done, pause the call and fully fuse the fan on the ground to either a one-handed or two-handed melee weapon. Now we want to head across the street and we're gonna go inside this house. Once inside, drop the entangled shield in the middle of the floor and then leave the house and start walking down the hill. Shortly after we leave the steps, you should see the fan on your weapon disappear. When this happens, 
take it out and swing the sword once. Now turn around and head back to the house. As you approach, you should see that the fan on your weapon has reappeared and is now on while the sword's on your back. Now go back into the house and pick up our shield, and this will let us keep the effect while being able to leave the cull zone. Depending on how much battery you have, you may need some zonai charges to keep the effect going longer. From this point, you've fully set up gas. Now, to launch yourself with it, all you need is an object you can lift above your head and ascend through. Different objects will launch you different distances. Some objects that you can use are rocks, cooking pots, fans, and big batteries. My recommendation for this is a big battery because in my experience, it gives you the largest launch and it's also one of the easier items to ascend through when you're holding it above your head. A little footnote for those who are familiar with throwless storage and are wondering why this works with gas launch and throwless didn't. Throwless didn't allow for gas launch because the launch requires the gas to be on the shield, not the weapon. While this process does technically cause the same effect as throwless, the fact that the fan on the weapon is also fused to the shield with entanglement means that even though it's invisible, the fan that's entangled to the shield is technically still on, which is what allows us to gas launch with this. Moving on to the second fuse entanglement glitch, we have weapon transmutation, aka weapon duplication. This is a glitch that I've covered many times and in many different forms, so this may sound a bit familiar. To start, you want to drop your target weapon, this is the one you want to duplicate, and a donor weapon. This is one that will be sacrificing to turn into the duplicate of the target weapon. Then you want to fuse entangle the donor weapon to your shield. From here, you can pause the call to make things a bit easier for you. Once your donor weapon is entangled, with the shield still equipped and no melee weapon equipped, go ahead and pick the donor weapon up off the ground. Now, you want to unequip your shield, and this will cause both the shield and the weapon to disappear from your hands, but the weapon will still be showing as equipped in the menu. From here, pick up your target weapon, and you should see it in your hand, but in your inventory, you'll see that it still says the donor weapon is equipped. Now simply drop the equipped weapon and pick it back up, and it will have fully duplicated into your target weapon. As a bonus, you can take your shield to Pelison and Terrytown and get that donor weapon back. Now, if you're thinking that's a lot to duplicate one weapon, namely because of the fuse entanglement, don't worry, I've got something else for you a little later in the video. The last fuse entanglement glitch we'll be going over is weapon stat transfer. Like weapon transmutation, I've covered this many times and in many forms, so this might be familiar to you. The process for this is going to be similar to the steps for weapon transmutation. First, you want to drop your target and donor weapons, then fuse and tangle your target weapon to your shield. Again, you can pause the call to make things a bit easier for you. Now, with the shield still equipped and no melee weapon equipped, pick up the target weapon and then unequip the shield. Again, this will cause both the shield and the weapon to disappear from your hands. Now, pick up your donor weapon and you should see it in your hand, but your inventory will show your target weapon equipped, but it will have the durability upgrade and fuse material of the donor weapon. From here, simply swap to a different weapon, then swap back to the target, and it will have fully upgraded with the donor's stats. As always, this is only capable of transferring the current durability value, the current fused material, and the upgrade effect. This will not transfer any weapon unique effects, such as the Royal Guard effect. Now, I didn't get any footage of this because I didn't plan to talk about it, but I felt I should at least give it an honorable mention, so enjoy whatever my editor decided to put on screen while I quickly talk about pocket rockets. Since we can fuse and tangle, that means that we do have access to pocket rockets again. The process for this, though, is basically the same as before. You just fuse and tangle a rocket to your shield, then normal fuse that rocket to a weapon, get up to some elevation, hold A, shield jump, and then mash B, and that's it. You'll continuously pump on the shield until your rocket or your shield break. If you want a more in-depth guide on that, you can check out the video up in the top right or down in the description. Now, moving on from the fuse entanglement related glitches, next up is arrow smuggling. If you're not familiar with arrow smuggling, what it does is allow you to automatically perform jump slash cancels. Those of you who have watched my 1.2.1 item duping videos, that's probably gonna perk your ears up real quick. Jump slash cancels allow you to do many different things, such as gaining infinite height, canceling fall damage, clipping through select ceilings, duplicating items, and probably some more that I'm forgetting. 
Now, this is very easy to set up. First, starting from the cave, you want to ascend up so you get cold. Once cold, you want to go into your inventory, however you want to do it, and equip a bow. Bear in mind that you will lose this bow in the process of setting this up, so choose one that you do not mind parting ways with. Once you've equipped the bow, make sure that you close your menu. The reason we do this is because the world does not update when the menu is open. We have to close it so any changes we make in the menu can be updated in the world. Now, go back into your menu and drop that bow that we just equipped and close back out. From here, there's two ways that you can finish this off. You can either warp away if you just want to go wherever, you know, if you want to if you have a horse set up for minus duping, you can just go warp to where that horse is and run wild. The other way that you can finish this off is just by pausing the cull. Once you stop the cull, however way you stop the cull, you'll be in the arrow smuggle. So now, how do you use this? To perform infinite jumps, first you need to equip a melee weapon. Now take out your arrow and jump forward, press Y to swing the sword in the air, and then press ZR to enter bullet time. This can be repeated infinitely with no loss to stamina. Just make sure that you wait for Link to finish pulling out the arrow before pressing Y to do another jump slash. Otherwise, you'll do the full jump slash and end up falling back to the ground. Pretty much once Link's arms stop moving together and that animation is done, you're good to press Y again and keep pumping yourself back up. For duplicating items, it just boils down to using arrow smuggle to set up minus duping. As for ceiling clipping and fall damage canceling, those are both a little too complex to go over in this video, so if you'd like me to make one, let me know down in the comments. Moving on, we have our final and another arguably biggest glitch that this setup allows for, and that's a weapon transmutation that doesn't require fuse entanglement. To perform this, we're going to do almost the same steps as arrow smuggling. So in the cave, before you ascend out to get culled, you want to first equip the weapon or whatever equipment it is that you want to duplicate. This will work the same for all equipment. That means any melee weapons, any shields, and any bow. You can also do this for multiple types of equipment at the same time, meaning you can dupe a melee weapon, a shield, and a bow all at the same time. So with your target gear equipped, go ahead and ascend out of the cave to get yourself culled. Once you're cold, go into your menu and equip a donor item. Now, like before, close out the menu to update the world, then go back in, drop that donor item, then close the menu again to update the world. From here, press minus and watch a memory. When that finishes, you have two choices. If you only want to dupe once, you can close this menu, your weapon will fall to the ground, you can uncall yourself, grab it, and be on your way. If you want to do more than once, when the memory finishes, instead of closing the menu, press plus to go back to your inventory and equip your target weapon or whatever new target weapon that you want to duplicate. Now close the menu and you'll see that your duplicate gear will fall to the ground before you get recalled. From this point, just repeat the steps of equipping and dropping a new donor, watch the memory, equip the target again, and so on and so forth for as long as you want. With this method, you can effectively print an entire inventory of weapons in two to three minutes. And that's gonna do it for this one. If you liked the video or if it helped you out, help me out by leaving a like and letting me know down in the comments. I'm working on a ton of videos right now, so if you don't wanna miss any of those, consider subscribing to the channel, maybe even turn on those notifications. If you wanna hang out in between uploads, you can join us on Discord. The server link for that can be found down in the description, along with a link to the Tears of the Kingdom speedrun Discord. Streams are currently on hold so I can focus on my backlog of videos, but you can follow me on Twitch to get notified when those start up again. And you can also follow me over on Twitter if you're into that sort of thing. But that's all from me. I'll see you in the next one.